Let's take a look at a touch sensor for mirrors. And the idea is that you can etch a symbol out of the mirroring of the back of the mirror and uh, that will sort of give a frosty effect to the glass and then you can stick this in the back of it and then slide this module in and it doesn't just illuminate that symbol at the back but then through the mirror you can actually touch it and turn things on and off. Let me connect a load to this. So I shall plug a power supply in, 12 volt power supply, it's rated for 12 to 24 volts. And I've got a bit of LED tape here, I'll point that down the way. It's got a very stiff lead though, which is annoying. Uh, it should point down the way, because that way I can now turn the lights off and show you this operating as it would be in a more realistic environment. So I'll just change the lighting now. One moment please. OK, here's a more realistic environment. So it's in the dark, you've got your mirror with its illuminated symbol in white, and you touch it, the symbol goes blue and the light lights up. If while it's lit, you press and hold, the light will dim down, and press and hold again, and the light will dim up. If you do the same when it's off, by tapping it once, uh, if I press and hold while it's in a sort of like off mode, it will go out completely and just touching it will wake it up and touching it again will turn the light on. Okay, let's uh, go back to the uh, proper illumination and we'll take a look inside and see how this comes apart. One moment, please. Okay, so I shall unplug this. I didn't actually realise until I just made this video that it actually dims. I didn't know that. That's quite handy. So let's see how this comes apart. I think we're going to need the spudger for this, which is unfortunate because I can't see it because I was using it earlier on. There it is. Let's gently spudge down the sides and see if we can get this out. <laughs> that wasn't too hard, was it? It is out. Uh, there's the big MOSFET. Is that an option for a second MOSFET? We'll find out. There's the little microcontroller. Is there a separate touch switch? I don't see a separate touch switch. I think the microcontroller may be doing the whole lot. Maybe it's a dedicated chip for that. Uh, the front illumination here. Let's prise this off. I can pretty much see there is an LED at this end and an LED at that end. That's more or less all that's on here. Well, it's off now. Uh, the white back and then a bit of a frosting and metalization and just to bounce the light across. Okay, right, tell you what, I shall take a picture of this. I'll also clean it up because it's got a bit of flux all over it and we'll uh, reverse engineer it and see what makes it tick. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. We'll get down and take a look at the circuit boards first. The component side of the circuit board has the position for two MOSFETs. It turns out that one of them is for the yellow option. Now, the Chinese don't refer to warm white as warm white. They call white white and warm white yellow. So this unit can be used with different software to switch between two colours. Uh, we've got the incoming supply here. The positive goes straight out to the load and then the negative of the load gets switched via the appropriate MOSFET. There's a couple of decoupling capacitors across here for stability. Lots of capacitors in this circuit because it is touch sensing circuitry and therefore needs a stable supply. Then there's a large protection diode, a current limiting resistor which shares part of the load of the regulator and also provides a bit of filtering, a capacitor before the voltage regulator, a capacitor in the output of the voltage regulator and, just for final measure, a capacitor across the supply rails directly at the chip itself. An unusual position in the supply rails, but I recognise this chip with the same touch sensor input as the one that was used in the Ripple uh, projector that I took apart recently. Same pinout. What else is worth mentioning here? There is a capacitor for some t timing. Not, I was going to say time function there. I think it, it could be timing, but it's also partly for the circuitry that monitors the touch sensor most likely. Uh, we've got the two LEDs on the back, which I'll show you in a moment, have their 330 ohm resistors, one going way over here and one just staying local over here. And we have the outputs to the MOSFETs going via 510 ohm resistor to the gate and then there's a 10k uh, pull down resistor for stability 
between the gate and the zero vote realm. It's also worth mentioning that they appear to have allowed for uh, various um, MOSFET packages. So it's not necessarily just this MOS size of MOSFET. They could, technically speaking, probably go down to an A2SHB if they wanted. Mm, it'd be a tight fit, but they could squeeze one in here. Um, OK, we'll take a look at the other side of the circuit board. It is notable for the... Note the 330 ohm resistor feeding the LED in that side and the 330 ohm resistor feeding the LED in that side um, and then this touch sensor connection and uh, now I've shown you that it's mostly a ground plane uh, mostly a ground plane around here for shielding the touch sensor and there's the LEDs I shall, I shall turn this up the other way that would make a lot more sense so there was the pad coming through for the white LED and there was the pad coming out over here and going to the blue LED and they also have a common track that goes around. It's the plus 5 volt realm. Uh, here is the connection through to the touch sensing disc and uh, then it is just a ground plane. Let me show you the schematic. What is that? That is a bug. Where did that come from? Ah. Uh, Zoom down and we'll take a look at this. We have an incoming supply of 12 to 24 volts. That goes straight to the output and also the between it and the zero volt rail there are a couple of uh, decoupling capacitors in parallel. There is the diode for polarity protection and then a 51 ohm resistor which does two things. It's a bit for filtering of any noise that might be happening in there because keep in mind it is pulse modulated so it's going to be cre creating quite a lot of noise. But also that will take some of the load off the 780L05 because this is just a very simple linear 5 volt regulator with decoupling capacitors either side and then another decoupling capacitor here across the chip pins. There's the mystery capacitor which is some special function inside to do with the touch sensing most likely. A couple of LEDs, the ones for uh, lighting at either white or blue, and then the 510 ohm resistor going to the MOSFET which is an AP60904BD um, and uh, that has a 10k pull down resistor for stability and that is it. Very straightforward, pretty much what we'd expect. It is all down to that special microcontroller. But quite a nice layout. It's interesting layout indeed. Uh, let, let's zoom back down on the circuit board and even focus on it. Here is the plate. The, this side had a white overlay on it for reflection and the LEDs at the side went into these little recesses in this plastic which has a textured back to reflect that light forward to catch it almost like this sort of engraved surface. But it also has a plastic film going around the edge which has the mirrored interior just to provide uh, good bouncing and then it's got the diffusion plate in the front just to basically spread the light out all over it. Kind of want to peel that off but it is stuck on very tightly. Can I get my fingernail into that? Not really. Oh there is. Oh it's multiple layers. We have a clear layer. Then we have the uh, white layer. And that one will definitely not be coming off. Let's try and let's use a kniff in a controlled manner to try and uh, lift that up. And it will just be diffused film. Yes, it's actually it's just stuck on at the ends with more metalization. And uh, this the etching is just on the other side of the plastic here. So that it spreads the light out when it comes in from the side, which you can't really do because it's got this film here, but that's what we'd get there with that sort of spreading of the light from that uh, riffled plastic, the texture plastic. But there we have it, uh, an interesting and useful little touch sensor and um, very minimal, which is kind of what we'd expect to see these days. Very neat. And there we have it. Uh, so if you need an illuminated touch sensor for behind your mirror or even under a, uh, a glass tabletop or something like that, then something like this may actually do it. It's quite a handy little module.